Michelle Manavis. Welcome to another episode of A Late Health Presents. Joining me today is the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Andrew Doe. Thank you, Dr. Manavis. I'm Dr. Andrew Doe, a vascular and interventional radiologist at A Late Health with Dr. Manavis. So last week, we talked a little bit about uterine fibroid embolization and how a vascular and interventional radiologist can provide effective treatment for it. And just to recap, a vascular and interventional radiologist uses image guidance to perform minimally invasive procedures that can treat a wide variety of disease processes. So Dr. Doe, after getting to see you practice and really being in your element, it's very obvious that you're so passionate about interventional radiology, and I don't think I ever got to ask you, why did you choose IR? So I always liked helping patients with my hands more than, let's say, managing medications and things like that. So the combination of the surgical side of interventional radiology and the ability to use the latest, most amazing technologies that we have was really something that attracted me. And as I practiced, I was even more able to bring in newer procedures. And especially since I founded a late health, we can bring in the newest procedures because it's myself and you who get to decide which procedures we think would be best in our setting, as well as which devices to use to do those procedures. And so it was the combination of the surgical side and the technology side, and of course, the ability to really change patients' lives. That is so great to hear, and it's really obvious to see how much we care for our patients and how passionate we are about our specialty. Speaking of bringing new technologies, Allayed Health is one of the leading providers of the venous seal ablation for varicose veins. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So, at Allayed Health, we treat many patients with venous disease, and until a few years ago, the standard treatment involved multiple needle punctures, using different things throughout the procedure, multiple steps. However, recently, there has been advancements with glue that can go into patients' bodies, and we can actually seal the vein immediately. Patients get to forego a lot of the other steps that are involved with the treatment of venous disease, and they're up and walking without wearing compression stockings very quickly. We've built that from one of the busiest vein practices in the state of Texas to now one of the exclusive practices offering venous seal, especially in the Houston metro area. Reproducible, successful results time and time again. Just another reason to send our patients, to bring our patients to a late health. Exactly. So to switch gears a little bit, I want to talk about our topic today that gets me super, super excited, and that is benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH. Dr. Doe, what is BPH? So BPH, as you said, the fancy word for it or the fancy name for it is benign prostatic hyperplasia. So all that means is the prostate's growing. And we don't know why the prostate's growing, but as men age, the prostate grows. It actually starts at about age 25, but at about age, by the time patients hit about age 60, about 50% of men have a prostate not only has it enlarged, but it's enlarged to the point where it's giving them some difficulty. Giving them some difficulty. So would that have to do with the anatomy? Perhaps we can explain a little bit about how the anatomy is set up. Yes. So when we go to the bathroom, when we urinate, our kidneys make the urine, and there's two tubes that connect these kidneys to our bladder. And then from the bladder, there's a tube that exits the body, and that's how we go to the bathroom. Unfortunately for men, the prostate sits right at the base of the bladder, and if it grows, it can squeeze that tube, and it can make it very difficult for the urine to get out and go to the bathroom. So that stricture, that area that's squished by the prostate, I guess is causing some back pressure into the bladder, and I'm assuming that would cause a lot of symptoms. Can you tell us a little bit about the symptoms one would experience? Yes. So. 
patients having trouble starting to go, having trouble actually getting the, the, the urine out of the bladder, as well as getting up in the middle of the night multiple times. Some patients even say, hey, I stopped taking road trips because I get this incredible urgency to just stop and go to the bathroom. And then when I get there, I have to wait forever for it to start. All of these are symptoms of an enlarged prostate. It seems that these symptoms really affect activities of daily living, quality of life. Now, in your experience, if you had to pick one symptom that really bothers the men the most, what would that symptom be? I would say it's getting up at night to urinate, especially if you're one of those people who can sleep through the whole night without going, and now all of a sudden you're getting up two, three, four, five times, who knows? That lack of sleep or that interrupted sleep, it affects every aspect of your life. I mean, you're going to work, you're kind of tired when you get there, you're kind of not moving as fast, your mind may not be as clear. You know, that's probably the symptom that most men seem to, I guess, highlight when we ask them questions when they come to see us at Elite Health is this getting up at night. Oh, I agree with you on that. The importance of a good quality night's sleep just really can't be underestimated. So, the- As someone fresh out of fellowship, <laughs> Dr. Manavis can clearly tell you that's important. Eight hours every night now, it feels great, guys. It feels great. <laughs> so with this benign prostatic hyperplasia, this BPH, what are the treatment options available? Can we start from, from you know, what is first-line therapy and kind of move on from there? Yes, so always in medicine, your first-line therapy usually comes from your primary doctor, and it's going to be in the form of some medications that will help kind of relax the muscles around the prostate and, and let you urinate more freely. Also, some medications will block the conversion of testosterone. We don't quite understand exactly why the prostate starts to grow, but we do know that a substance called DHT, which comes from testosterone, kind of promotes growth of the prostate. So your doctor may try blocking some of that to keep it from getting worse. Um, so those are usually the first steps in treating the, the, the big prostate. Okay, so say a man starts taking these medications and they get horrible side effects from them, side effects that they can't tolerate. A lot of our men just don't want to take pills every single day. So from that point, where do we move? So I guess Dr. Manavis is starting to realize how stubborn men are. (laughs) (laughs) But from the medication side, a lot of the patients they do. And unfortunately, these medicines don't just do what they're supposed to do as far as the prostate goes, but some will kind of destroy your energy level, destroy your libido. Um, Others will make you kind of moody and emotional. So if you fail the medicines or... Some patients will have great results with the medicine, but as time goes on, they'll stop getting as good of results. And you can only go so high on the dose of these medicines. So the next step is going to be something a little more invasive um, to full-blown surgery for the prostate. And the options for this, the classic one, I like to tell patients it's kind of like a drill bit. Um, It's called a TERP. So that's a abbreviation for transurethral, going through the urine tube um, into the prostate, resection of the prostate, so T-U-R-P. And basically what they do is they, they put a device through the urethra, up the penis, and it kind of chews up that tissue of the prostate and opens that pathway. It seems that that's a pretty invasive place to start, but that is the gold standard as of now. Um, is there a less, a less invasive option that the urologists offer? Yes. So there's another procedure, uh, which is called a uro lift. And basically what the urologist will do is he'll put, if you think of it in terms of uh, nuts and bolts, it's like a washer that goes inside the urethra, and then they tie sutures around the prostate, and they pull them together to open up that channel. Now, This is always an option, but it's limited um, to prostates of a certain size. It works best with prostates about 30 to 45 grams, and we'll talk more about uh, the size of the prostate. Um, Even though it's been done in prostates up to 80, it really works best under 45. 
okay? And say that a man hears all of these options and surgery sounds daunting. Um, the surgery sound too aggressive, too invasive. What option do we offer here at Elite Health? So at Elite Health, we offer the newest treatment for BPH. It's called prostatic artery embolization, where we shut off the blood flow to the prostate, and that causes it to shrink. So the shrinkage happens as we embolize or send beads into the prostatic artery, is that right? Yes. So let's clear this up now. The shrinkage of the prostate happens, but it, the prostate itself doesn't die off. So we're not actually killing the prostate or stopping the blood flow. We're slowing the blood flow down, right? Yeah, so this prostate's so big. It's got all this blood flow and requires all of this blood flow to stay alive. And what Dr. Doe and I do here to late health, we slow down the blood flow just enough that a normal prostate could live. And so when we do that, the prostate has two options. It can either behave or it could die off. And it always behaves. It shrinks down and the passageway opens up for the urine to pass through freely. I'd like to get into the procedure details because all of this is so exciting for me, but we have to take a short break and we'll be right back. During the Cadillac season's best sales event, Ron Carter Cadillac, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, delivers 0% APR for 72 months, plus $3,000 bonus cash on both the first ever 2020 CT4 Luxury Collection for only $449 a month, and the first ever 2020 CT5 Luxury Collection for just $499 a month, both with only $1 down. Gulf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281 281- 881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. During the season's best sales event, Ron Carter Cadillac delivers 0% APR for 72 months plus $2,500 bonus cash on all 2020 XT4, XT5, and XT6. Or drive 2020 XT4 Luxury Collection only $299 a month. 2020 XT5 Premium Luxury Collection just $369 a month. And first ever 2020 XT6 Premium Luxury Collection just $399 a month. All for 39 month lease with just $1 down. Ron Carter I'm attorney Willie Powell. Allow me to express myself with you. If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck accident, give me a call and we'll get it fixed today. And we're back after our short break with the Late Health Presents. And today we're talking about a condition that affects many, many men. Actually, Dr. Doe, how many men does BPH affect? So at about the age of 60, by about the age of 60, 50% of all men will be affected by a, an enlarged prostate. And by the age of 85, it's about 90%. So estimates are about 14 million men per year are affected by an enlarged prostate. Wow, that is a staggering number. Okay, so with these 14 million men that I'm sure are all watching right now because they want to know all about the prostate artery embolization, can you walk us through the procedure? Is the patient asleep? Is he awake? Can we just go through that for a little bit? So the patient is lightly sedated, probably similar or not quite as much as a colonoscopy, and most men in the age of BPH have probably already gone through a colonoscopy. So it's far more pleasant. 
But we'll go into the artery and the leg, and the great thing about the vascular system is it's like plumbing. It's all connected. So we can go into the right leg, and we can actually treat the artery on both sides of the prostate with a small catheter. We can watch it in real time on, under x-rays, we call it fluoroscopy, and we can put these little tiny wires with these little tiny catheters into the artery to the prostate. And once we're in there, we can take pictures from a whole bunch of different angles and make sure we're only going to affect the prostate. And then, once we get everything in position, we can put in these tiny little particles and those will plug up the blood vessels to the prostate. And so after the procedure, are we stuck in the hospital for a couple of days? Or The beauty of having your prostate embolized at a late health is it's a very comfortable, calm setting, and everything is very compact and very close. You'll have one-to-one, -one actually. Now they get two-to-one doctor care, and you'll never be more than a few feet away from your physician. And you'll be in the uh, office probably about two to three hours total from the time you come in to the time you have your procedure and leave. Wow. Wow. So I know the 14 million men out there are thinking, all right, so I get this procedure. It's going to work right away. Is that how that works? Well, unfortunately, I, w I don't want to say it's a downside, but with the nature of the procedure, it'll actually take some time for the prostate to shrink. When we first started doing this, we used to tell everybody, wait 12 weeks. So three months, men, apparently we're not just stubborn, we're impatient. But a lot of my patients, our patients, have come back at two weeks, four weeks, saying they, they're noticing a difference already. But in some patients, they may not notice it until that 12-week mark, but they will notice it a little longer than, let's say, if you had a TERP or a Urolift. Typically, that happens you know, within a week or so. Okay, so that's kind of the trade-off that you get when you go minimally invasive. Yes, unfortunately. And just to circle back on what we were talking about earlier with the symptoms, I agree that getting a good night's sleep is top of the list, but second on that list is erectile dysfunction. A lot of the men that come to see us are experiencing some degree of erectile dysfunction. Does this prostate artery embolization, this PAE, does it affect this negatively in any way? So actually, for Dr. Manavis, erectile function for men is always number one. <laughs> so, no, actually, the, one of the great things about this prostate artery embolization is there's no risk of worsening erectile dysfunction. As a matter of fact, there was a recent study that showed 60% of men that had a prostate artery embolization had increased erectile function or better erections after the procedure. And, you know... When the patients go in and they talk to the urologist or they talk to us and they're given all their treatment options, you know, this is really the best option as far as improving erectile function that there is. And, you know, it's probably a combination of being able to come off your medicines, which typical side effect is erectile dysfunction, as well as the blood being shunted to the penis away from the prostate. Okay, would you happen to know um, with the TERP if there's any negative or positive effects for erectile dysfunction? Is it about the same for the two? No, actually with the TERP, the average is probably about 10% of men that can have erectile dysfunction. And some studies even say that might even be higher, closer to 15%. Wow. Okay. All right. So um, moving on to just post-procedurally, how many weeks, months should, the, should our patients schedule to be off work after they've had a prostate artery embolization? So, you know, it's really just the day of the procedure. Now, we're going to go into the artery. We're going to plug it up when we're done. So you have to you know, be cautious about that. But the patient is up and moving. You know, they're walking out of the office. And by the next day, the anesthesia medicines have worn off. So they can go back to work. And we, we don't even give the patients pain medicine, you know, for post-procedure. And the most common thing we'll see is some irritation, some burning with urination, but it's nothing that keeps you from going back to work. So let's talk a little bit about outcomes. What can our patients expect after the procedure, after they've waited this six to eight weeks and the embolization has started to kick in and their prostate's starting to shrink? 
So they're going to see a gradual improvement in their symptoms. They're going to be getting up less often. They're going to have less of that feeling of urgency that they really have to go. And when we look at prostate artery embolization versus TERP, the gold standard, they're both 80% successful at five years. So even though our procedure is newer, um, it's already as good as the gold standard. So let's jump into a little bit about the history of the prostate artery embolization. Um, were you around when it was invented? <laughs> well, the idea of embolizing far predates me. Dr. <laughs> Manavis thinks I'm much older than I am. But the use of this procedure for a big prostate, that's relatively recent. And what happened was typically a patient would go into their doctor, they'd have symptoms of an enlarged prostate, and their doctor would order a prostate-specific antigen level, a PSA level. And if this came back high, then the patient would be sent to the urologist, and they would have a biopsy done to make sure they got tissue from the prostate, made sure it was just a big prostate, there was no cancer or anything you know, foreboding that they saw. Now, when they did this, some of these patients would have some bleeding. You're, you're taking samples of tissue with a sharp needle so you can have some bleeding. Patients that would continue to bleed after the procedure, the urologist would send them to their interventional radiologist and say, hey, can you embolize the prostate? And the patient keeps having bleeding. And someone far smarter than I am decided to look at those patients and see how they did. And for some reason, if you speak Portuguese, they were really at the forefront. Two physicians in Brazil and another physician in Portugal um, looked at this and found out that these patients' prostates actually shrunk after they treated them for bleeding. Um, so the doctor in Portugal, Dr. Pishko, was really at the forefront of pushing this procedure for treating BPH, not just bleeding. And I was lucky enough to work with Dr. Pishko 10 years ago. In 2010, I went to Lisbon, Portugal, and stayed with him for a week. And we discussed patients. We did procedures. Um, we saw patients before, after, and during the procedures. So it was really eye-opening to see these patients and listen to them and see how promising this new study was. Unfortunately, in the U.S., things get coming along a little slower, given the FDA and things like that. And it wasn't until about, I believe it was 2017 or 2018 when it was finally approved by Medicare. So finally approved by Medicare, that means Medicare covers the procedure? Yes, Medicare and most insurances will cover the procedure. There are a few that are still um, picky about it, but yes, it is covered by insurance. That's so great to hear. And for our referring providers that are watching, is there anything that we would require from um, our urology friends, our family medicine friends, our internal medicine friends that send us a patient? Do they need imaging before? They typically don't. Some insurances will want an ultrasound before they'll allow us to get the MRI. Um, but typically we can order everything um, and, and do a complete workup for the patient. And what makes a good prostate artery embolization patient? So a patient with a big prostate, and again, the bigger the better. The great thing about PAE is there's no size limit, so we can treat anything. Um, also, the younger the patient, typically, you know, every man with age will get some narrowing in their arteries and things like that. So the older the patient, the, the more difficult it can be. But the older the patient, the bigger the prostate, so that kind of offsets itself. That's a good, that's a trade-off in and of itself as well. Yes. So that's all the time we have for today. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of A Late Health Presents. Dr. Manavis and I would like you to give us a call if you have any of the symptoms that we were talking about today or even in our last show. Again, it's alatehealth.com or 713-955-1707. Again, thank you for tuning in and we'll be back with you shortly on another episode of A Late Health Presents. Until next time.